Hey everybody, this is the fourth here, and in this video I will be introducing you to the vector scope. A vector scope is a type of oscilloscope that plots the amplitudes of the left and right channels against each other. The image created by this graph is called a Lissajous figure. The graph is often rotated by 45 degrees so that what you see relates to what you hear more closely. And by this I mean that a mono sound would appear as a vertical line in the middle of the graph. In concept, this sounds pretty simple. So why is the image so complex when playing a song? Well, let's start with the mono sound example. We know that when we play a mono sound as stereo, the left and right channels will be identical waveforms. This means that at any given time, the amplitude of the left channel will be equal to the amplitude of the right channel. In the vector scope graph, this information could be expressed as L equals R, or a diagonal line with a slope of 1. If we rotate this by 45 degrees, we will now have a vertical line. However, the vector scope plots points in real time rather than graphing an equation. We see a line segment in the vector scope because of how quickly the amplitude changes in an audio waveform. If I lower the frequency enough, you can actually see the movement of the point as the amplitude of the waveform changes. And you can see that the vector scope is following along with this oscilloscope over here. You can imagine that with two different complex waveforms for your left and right channels, that the point plotted would be all over the place, and this is why the vector scope's display can appear so complex or chaotic. <laughs> Before I get into the practical use of a vector scope, there are a couple more scenarios I want to look at. Let's say the waveform for my right channel was the inverse of that of my left channel. And by this I mean that all positive amplitude values in the left channel waveform are negative in my right channel, and vice versa. This could be expressed as L equals negative R which appears as a diagonal line with a slope of minus 1 on a graph. If we rotate this 45 degrees the same way we did before, we will have a horizontal line, and this can be observed in the vector scope. And you can see on the oscilloscope, if I kind of overlay the left and right channel, that the amplitude values are inverted. And you get that horizontal line on the vector scope. If we have a sound that is panned completely to the right, this means that all of the amplitude values for the left channel will be zero, regardless of what the amplitude values for the right channel are. And this could be expressed on the graph as L equals 0. And if we graph this, we get a horizontal line on the horizontal axis. But if we rotate this graph 45 degrees the same way we have been, you'll see it becomes a diagonal line. And you can see this on the vector scope as well. So let's look at practical use of the vector scope while mixing. And just like with the peak meter and spectrum analyzer, it's important not to get too distracted by or base your mixing decisions entirely on the readings of the vector scope. However, the vector scope can definitely be a helpful tool to get a better idea of just what's happening in your stereo mix. So from the technical information provided earlier, you can tell that the vector scope displays a clear representation of 
A mono sound source. Hard panning. And complete inversion. For the most part, you should be able to hear these pretty well on your own. But if you are unsure for whatever reason, a vector scope can definitely help you out. In addition to these, the vector scope can give you a decent idea of the stereo width of a sound, but it is a little bit less clear, so definitely trust your ears first. So if a vertical line represents a mono sound, it would make sense that things that have less stereo width will appear on the vector scope as being closer to a vertical line. And you could kind of think of complete amplitude inversion as maximum stereo width because your channels will share no amplitude values other than zero. Therefore, sounds with wider stereo images will appear on the vector scope as more spread out horizontally. I've heard that a good guideline to aim for if you want a nice full stereo width without being too wide is to aim for about a circular shape on the vector scope. And this is because if you get too wide, you're going to have mono compatibility issues. So you hear when I convert this sound to mono, it loses a lot of its presence. And you can hear that this sound doesn't really sound very full in terms of the stereo image. So a roughly circular shape is a good guideline, but as always, you really want to use your ears first and not think of that as a rule or anything like that. <laughs> 